Math 1314, Tyler Jr. College, section 3.5, Rational Functions. Arrow notation. In the previous video, we analyzed some characteristics of rational functions that were different than characteristics of polynomial functions. Specifically for this rational function, we analyzed in behavior by letting x get larger and larger towards infinity and letting x getting larger and larger towards negative infinity. But we also analyzed the behavior as our x value approached the two values that were excluded from the domain. Recall that the two values excluded from the domain were positive and negative 2. When we picked numbers that got closer to positive 2, our y values dropped to negative infinity. But when we picked values that got closer to negative 2, the y values seemed to be settling down. Behind me is a graph of this function. By the time this series of videos are over, you will learn how to take a rational function, analyze it completely, and use that information to sketch a graph like this. A um, little bit of a commentary, though. We're going to be looking at something called arrow notation. If you see an arrow, a single line arrow, we're going to read that as the word approaches, meaning that I get closer to it without ever actually reaching. Secondly, this graph has, an, has a horizontal line at y equals 1 half and a vertical line at x equals 2 that are not parts of the graph but serve as boundaries for the graph in the sense that as the graph keeps going, it approaches those lines. These lines are called asymptotes, A, S, Y, and P, T, O, T, E. Horizontal one is called a horizontal asymptote, imagine that, and the vertical one is called a vertical asymptote. And you may also notice that there is a hole in this graph. This hole is at negative 2 comma 1 eighth, and when the time is right, we'll explain where that came from. But let's just say that we have the graph. We have a visual representation of everything we just said in the previous video, because we said four things about the behavior of this graph. Thing number one, remember when the x's got larger and larger, our y values were settling down what looked like one half, and in this case, we have a visual that confirms that. So this arrow at the end of the graph can be interpreted using arrow notation as follows. This arrow means as x approaches infinity, so as x gets larger and larger, then y is approaching one half. The further out we go, the closer the y values get to one half. So that would be the arrow notation to describe this end behavior. How would we use a similar notation to describe the left end behavior? It's below the horizontal asymptote at y equals 1 half, but it's still approaching it. So for this arrow, we could say as x approaches negative infinity, because it's going forever to the left, then y is approaching, the y values are getting closer and closer to 1 half. And as we'll discuss more in detail, that's the role of a horizontal asymptote to describe the end behavior of the graph in the sense that the y values start settling down when the x's blow up, either positively or negatively. But what about when we substituted 1, 1 1.9, 1.99, 1.999? We started getting some ridiculously large negative numbers. Well, they weren't that ridiculously large, but they were getting larger. On the graph, that means that as we started putting in values getting closer to 2, our y values were dropping down towards negative infinity. But here's where we have to be a little careful and introduce an even more specific notation. The graph is not dropping down to negative infinity on both sides of this vertical line. On the left side, as we're coming in from the left, yes, the graph is dropping down to negative infinity. But if we come in from the right side of it, the graph is going up to positive infinity. So sometimes when you're describing um, the behavior of a graph using the arrow notation, you have to be more specific than just say approaches. Because there are two types of approaches when you're approaching a finite value. You can approach it from the left, or you can approach it from the right. The symbol to represent those things 
look like exponents. And what looks like an exponent but is a positive sign means that you're approaching from the right. So x pointing to a with what looks like a positive in the exponent means x approaches a from the right. Which is kind of ironic because if you're approaching from the right, you're actually moving towards the left. And the same thing except with the negative up here, that means that x approaches a from the left. So if we were approaching 2 from the left, we would be coming in from the left side, which again is a little ironic because we're moving towards the right. So now that we have a more specific arrow notation to describe not only approaching a value, but approaching it from its left side or its right side, we can describe both the behavior here and the behavior up here. To describe the behaviors we're coming in from the left of 2, we can start by saying as x approaches 2 from the left. That's what the little negative up there means. Then what is y approaching? That's worst error I've drawn. y is approaching negative infinity because the y value is getting larger and larger and larger in the negative direction. But how would we describe this guy? What is the x doing? The x is approaching 2 from the right. So x pointing to a 2 with a plus up there. Then what are the y values doing? What are the y values approaching? Well, they're skyrocketing and they're going up towards infinity. So arrow notation can be used to describe the behavior of the y when the x behaves a certain way. x goes towards negative infinity, y is getting closer to 1 half. x is getting closer to positive infinity, y is getting closer to 1 half. X is getting closer to 2 from the left side of 2. Y is approaching negative infinity. X is approaching 2 from the right. Y is approaching positive infinity. I do want to talk about the hole in the graph real quick. Although there are no arrows here indicating the graph coming in towards it, there's just literally a hole in the graph, we can describe what's going on at that hole using arrow notation. Remember, this hole is at negative 2 comma 1 eighth. And again, when the time is right, we'll figure out how to locate not only the x-coordinate, but its y-coordinate. So let's see if we can describe the left, coming in from the left and the right. As x approaches, we're approaching negative 2, but we're approaching it from the left. Then what is the y getting closer to? Well, as we're coming in from the left and heading towards that point, what's the y value of our destination? The y value of this point is 1 eighth. And as x approaches negative 2 from the right, so negative 2 with the plus up there, then what is the y value approaching? Well, same thing if we're coming in from the right side of this hole. The y value of our destination is 1 eighth. So in this case, the left and right approaching values are the same. For those of you heading towards calculus, you will see this arrow notation very early in the class, and it will be a recurring theme throughout the class when you discuss a concept called limits. One last comment since I'm in the calculus frame of mind. If x approaches a number from the left and from the right, the y's are doing the same thing then you can actually say as x approaches negative 2 without mentioning the direction it's coming from then y approaches 1 8th because if the left side and the right side are approaching the same thing there's no need to differentiate between the two so and again this will be more discussed in calculus but if the, if the limit coming in from the left matches the limit coming in from the right then you don't have to specify coming in from left or right here we had to, because here as we came in from the left and came in from the right, the y values were doing different things.